Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes, and today I'm gonna to be talking about why hiring an answering service for your lawn care or landscaping business is really the best thing you could do. And before we get started, I wanna say a big thank you for watching. These type of videos don't get a lot of views, but I'm really passionate about it. Some people have been saying, why don't you do more mowing on the field? I just don't have the time anymore. I can make these videos in about 15 to 20 minutes versus spending a whole day recording out in the field. So. Do those out in the field on a mower get a lot more views? Yes, but these is really what I care about because it's gonna help you actually grow your business, not just entertain you. So I know me behind a white, you know, next to a white whiteboard, extremely entertaining, but probably not as much as mowing a lawn, uh, but it doesn't get as many views. So if you appreciate this content, I'd appreciate a like. And even if you're part of our Facebook group and you could share a video like this when it is impactful for you, I'd really appreciate that too. But let's jump into it because I think I have a, a bit of a unique perspective due to the fact that I use answering services and I also have built an answering service for the franchisees at Augusta Lawn Care. So if you don't know who I am, I'm the founder of Augusta Lawn Care. We have 50 plus locations and we answer phones for all of them as well as do a whole bunch of other office admin work from our what we call command center, which is like an answering service for our franchisees. And before someone comments asking if we can do theirs and open it up to other people outside the franchisees, no. Um, and everyone's like, well, you can make more money. You can just charge people more. No, the whole reason Command Center works and we can charge 30 to 40% less than anyone else when it comes to back-end answering services is because we all use the same model. We're all using the same software, the same systems, allowing us to have much more economies of scale and efficiencies at Command Center. So just to answer everyone's questions, we can't do your phone calls. We cannot, will not ever open up Command Center to anyone outside the franchise simply because we would then have to charge a dollar fifty, two dollars a minute, which is what the average is. So, like, we then lose our differentiation factor, and we just become another service. So, but I'll give you a couple others right off the top: Call Boss, Pink Callers, as well as uh, Jill's Receptionist. Those are all a few that you can you can use. And you know, Jill's Receptionist is going to work really well with Jobber. Uh, Pink Caller is going to work great with Service Autopilot, and then Call Boss is a little bit more flexible, and they all have different price points. But typically, you're going to be paying somewhere in the neighborhood of $1.50 to $2 per minute that they're on the phone. And if you hire someone to do other tasks outside of calling, then they might be a slightly discount, more like $1.10 to $1.40 when they're actually doing the task. I'm not a huge fan of when a calling service asks for a big chunk, like a, for a whole week for one person, because the whole benefit of having an answering service is the fact that you get charged by the minute they're actually doing work. So I'm gonna to explain today why that's so important. And it comes down to the fact that for an office person, most of the time they're actually not doing work. They are going to the bathroom, getting coffee, talking, getting clarification, doing a follow-up email. They're doing other random tasks, you know, getting the printer set up, getting the internet set up. Oh, the internet crashed. Like, there's so many things that go on in an office to where most of their time is not actually doing the work. So you only wanna be paying when they're actually doing the work and I'd much rather be charged two or three times as much when they're actually doing the work on a minute by minute, second by second basis. So, a couple things I want you to keep in mind and first and foremost, let's address the fact, should I answering a, have an answering service? Are you a small lawn care business? Are you a small land scheme business? Let's assume that you are small and you get a few calls a day. But let's assume that first of all, we're getting charged a dollar and 50 cents per minute on the phone. So when the, when the, when the, when the customer's on the phone with the our calling service, we're getting charged one dollar and fifty cents per minute, down to the second. Okay, so we're only getting charged when they're on the phone. We're not getting charged when they are, you know, leaving us a note of what happened, etc. Let's assume that the average call is three minutes, and I know this from a fact. Basically, uh, the average phone call in this industry is about three minutes because uh, sometimes you get forty-five second calls of someone just wanting to quickly ask a question. Then you get six or seven-minute phone calls when someone's trying to ask clarification on an estimate or an invoice they have questions about, they've got to change their billing information, whatever it might be. Average is three minutes per phone call, okay? We have $1.50 per minute, so that's going to equal $4.50 average per call. So per call, and we're going to assume that we do four calls per day, okay? So if we do the math on that, Four, four and a half dollars times four calls per day, that's gonna mean that we are gonna have $16 per day that we are gonna pay this answering service. So if we have 20 days 
in a month that we do work, so five days a week, four weeks in a month, that is gonna be 20 days uh, per month that is actually, we're using this answering service, that's going to mean that we pay $320 per month to this answering service to get our phones answered on the first or second ring and have someone actually live, in person, answering the phone. This prevents you from having to be on the mower, be like, yeah, Mr. Jones, yeah? One second, I can't hear you very good. What's, what was that? You want what? What? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll be over there tomorrow. Like, you can avoid all of that by having an answering service that can pick up your phone, be professional, immediately pull up someone's account in front of them on their computer instead of getting back to them the next day or calling them, like I said, in the background and there's a mower. That, that just doesn't make you seem as professional. And in my, my, perf my opinion, like, you could simply raise your prices by $5 per hour just to accommodate this extra price. If you're a solo operator, maybe you have one employee just getting started, I still think this is an amazing opportunity. If it was double this, if it was $3 a minute and I had to pay $600, I still think this is a great deal even if you're a solo operator and you're only getting a couple calls a day. Because if you're a solo operator, you're not getting like hundreds of calls. You're literally getting four or five a day. And I know this from doing, we have lots of franchisees and when they're just starting out, they're only getting like four or five, six calls a day max and if they're growing fast there's more obviously because you're advertising but if you're small and you're not trying to grow really quickly you're only going to get several calls a day people got to change their account information or ask for an extra estimate or maybe someone sees your truck and, and, and calls but those four or five phone calls if you can close one extra person because you're not you know o blaring over the uh, sound of a mower in the background you're you're going to get you know more jobs as well as the fact that now you're answering it live or your answering services instead of getting back to you know that evening because because they left a voicemail. Uh, at the end of the day, in this industry, I've said it before, most of the time the job is gonna go to the person who answers the phone first, and then whoever gets the estimate to the person first. They're gonna be the person that, that the, the company that wins the job. So if I can simply avoid them having to leave a voice message, yes, a voice message is fine, you get back to them a little bit later or after the job that you're currently at, you get back in the truck, but it's not, it's not easy to switch from office person in your little laptop on your, in your truck or on a phone and then being like, okay, now I'm gonna go out and work. Like it's, it's a tough transition back and forth, it's distracting to you, it makes you very reactive, and I'd much rather have someone professional doing it and getting, even if I had to pay twice as much of this as a solo operator, I, I would be happy. All right, now you're asking, well, what if you're a big business, okay? Because the question they say, that makes a lot of sense if I can only pay, you know, five, six hundred bucks a month for someone to answer my phone uh, throughout the week. Uh, if I'm a solo operator, but what if I'm a big company? What if I'm doing a hundred thousand a month, two hundred thousand dollars a month in revenue? You know, what about then? I want you to think about this, and that is the cost of having an actual office person. Because now if you've grown to 100,000, 200,000 per month in revenue, you need an office. You need an office person full time. You might even need two if you're growing to that size. But let's assume you just need one office person. Let's assume you're maybe doing like 100,000 in monthly revenue on average. So this is gonna be for a big business. Do I still need a calling service when I am big? Now let's assume I have 500 customers and the, the typical attrition rate or amount of customers that you lose every year is around 20%. So literally I'm gonna lose 100 customers because of bad customer service, I mess stuff up, they move, they sell their house, whatever. I think, I truly believe I can reduce that attrition rate down to 10% simply by having someone in the office all the time, whether it be an answering service or an actual person in the office taking phone calls and being alert to the customer's needs when they need it. So right away, I literally can't have a plus 50 or a net 50 increase on customers simply because I have better customer service, better answering time, better communication, and yet keep more customers. So there's plus 50 right there. Now let's assume that I do 500 estimates every single year. And at a, you know, 100,000 in revenue, you're gonna do it probably on 500 estimates a year. If I could increase my close ratio from 40% to 50%, okay? So I'm, I'm literally just going up 10% in my close ratio because I have uh, an answering service. I have either an answering service or someone in the office. Because remember, at big, I might actually have an office staff and, and an actual office building, okay? If I can do that, that's gonna lead to an extra, and again, a plus 50 customers simply because I have an office staff. I want my closing ratio went from 40%, so 40% of estimates I gave were accepted. Now I went all the way to 50%, 
10% more simply because I have someone's answer the phones immediately. I'm able to get the estimate back to the client as fast as possible right after I'm done putting together the numbers. And so I literally lead to a positive net 100 customers simply by having an office. This is why when you get bigger, you need to have an office, whether it be an answering service or an actual office building. Now, I'm gonna try to convince you or give you the math of why even when you're large, having an answering service is still the best option. Most of the time when people say, well, I need an office person full time, they don't take into consideration all the different factors and costs that come with that office person. So let's go through the math, okay? Let's assume, actually I don't have it written down, so let's just do it on the fly. Uh, we have, let's do an office staff person, and for a good office staff that is by themselves working all day long, they're very much keenly aware of your emails, your billing, your invoicing, everything that they're doing, you're probably gonna pay at least $25 per hour. Okay, this is gonna be your solo person, they know everything about the business, they do all the scheduling, they do all the payroll, they do everything. And again, I'm assuming this includes payroll taxes, so you're probably only actually giving them $20 an hour, but with taxes and all the rest of it, you're looking at $25 per hour without any like paid time off, you know, benefits, uh, paid leave, all this other stuff. So you know what, in all reality, just to be actually, you know, much more accurate, you really need to put the cost of all, it's gonna be $30 an hour, okay? Because, you know, just paid time off, we give two, pay, two weeks paid time off. If you have medical benefits, payroll taxes, uh, labor and industry, like L&I, and workers comp, and all the rest of it, you're looking at 30 bucks an hour cost to have an office person. All right, but what people don't usually realize, because what they'll do is like, okay, well if I can do 30, you know, $30 an hour, and I do 40 hours a week, and I can multiply that four times, a, 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 a four weeks in a, a month, that's basically, let's see, 120, that's gonna be like 400, thousand eight hundred dollars so like, you know what if I've grown my, my business and I have a big office or a big customer base and maybe 50 60 70 a hundred thousand dollars in monthly revenue I can afford five thousand dollars a month in payroll and you're right you can and you should you should five thousand dollars would be a great trade-off on a hundred thousand dollar business to keep all the books clean answer the phones when you need it etc however this is this is where I have the problem this is why I still think you should have a, a virtual staff for your office even when you're big first thing is the big bad turnover the problem is this office person is extremely valuable because they have all the information of your business in their head. What happens when they get injured or they, they have a, a child and they need to leave or they get sick for two weeks and now all of that burden falls on you. And then when you gotta go hire somebody else, you gotta find them and train them for three or four months literally just to get them up to speed where this office person was. Then that person leaves after a few more months. And if you have any turnover in your office, it's gonna be extremely bad. This is why a lot of times people use their spouse or their uh, relatives because they're literally afraid that their office person would leave and if they did it would be very very bad it would take the owner training the office person for a, a, a few months to get them up to speed on billing invoicing scheduling payroll all the different aspects of running an office so turnover is a huge problem because I'm not even baking that into this price and that is your time training that office person on how to answer the phone how to input a customer how to take a contact form how to answer an email all the tiny little details of running an office this is gonna cost way more for you to train them because now your time is most valuable is now spent literally just training somebody who might leave in three six eight months and now you're doing that all the time so turnover is killer and this is something we're not even taking into account when we look at this number another reason why I'd still say at this size of business you should have a virtual office staff is because of the winter months or down months whether it be winter summer Etc. And that is, guess what? If you're in the winter months and you have a really good office person, you might only go, you might go from 100,000 a month in revenue down to say 30 or 40,000 a month in revenue. But guess what? You're still going to pay this 4,800 because you want to keep that person on staff. If they're really good, you know, if they're really bad, they don't, they're not really worth 4,800. If they're really good, it is worth it. But you do it throughout the whole winter months when you're only doing like, you know, 30, 40,000 in revenue and literally, 10, 15% of your revenue is going out the door just to pay this person because this is considered like literally a fixed cost because you're not gonna let them go for three months. They're not going to want to stay, if they're good, they're not gonna stay for three months, or they're not going to want to leave for th three months. They're gonna stay and you're gonna pay them even though you can't really afford it and the business isn't making as much money and that's really a fixed cost now. 
So during the winter months, even when you slow down, you have to keep paying them. For a virtual office, if you're paying by the minute, you get to basically have a variable cost of this number here because as you slow down and there's less calls and less call volume and less customers and less jobs and less estimates, you pay less. So now with a, with a virtual staff, this expense of an office becomes a variable cost based upon how much re revenue and how much jobs you're doing versus being a fixed cost that regardless of how much work you have, you still have to pay this because you don't want to lose them when your business slows down. The third reason, the biggest reason why I still think if you have a big company, you should be using a virtual office is because of overhead. Because people, what people don't take into account is all the other costs associated with having an office staff. Because guess what? This office person isn't going to want to work out of their vehicle. They're going to need, they're going to want an office. So this is the, these are the hidden costs of having this office person. It's not just the 4,800. It's a lot more because this, these are the things that are not being taken into account. Rent, okay? If I do not have an actual office building and I'm having virtual staff answer my calls, do my emails, etc., the rent for my, my property can literally be a gravel parking lot with some storage on it. I do not need an office building with a, a permit to have occupancy and lights and uh, toilets and water and all the other uh, utilities and an internet. I don't need internet at my office anymore. So literally, my rent just my rent alone would go from let's say $800 a month for like a pad of gravel and a storage container, no building structure whatsoever. I can get this on like my own land, I don't need commercial land, etc. Now that's gonna literally become like $3,000 a month if you're running a pretty big business. Because on this one, I can just park my trucks, put a storage container. On this one, I need an actual like office building. I've got to have it where it's commercially rated and zoned. And I gotta have it all wired and a big structure and indoors and all the rest of it. All right, so I'm gonna be paying a lot more per month. So this difference here is what, 2,200? Let's just call it two grand extra. So a difference of two grand per month is gonna be the cost of having the extra building of for rent. Plus, I've got to have utilities. All right, so that's gonna be water, sewer, garbage, internet connection. We pay almost $500 per month in the internet we got at our other shop. Uh, before, of course, we had our virtual staff, which now we will not need that. But before we had command center, we, we had to get internet installed. Guess what? It cost us $500 a month because we had to run a line for like 500 yards, dig through a channel, whatever, give, give us fiber optic. Utilities is literally for us almost $1,000 per month by the time we have water, sewer, garbage, Garbage, internet access. Uh, we, we have solar, but if you don't have solar and you gotta do lights, like it's gonna be even more. So literally a thousand dollars extra more in utilities. Now you can still have to have garbage and things even at the smaller rent size, but the actual utilities of the electricity, the uh, the water for the toilet and all the, the plumbing and all the rest of it, that's gonna be a lot more if you have this large building. So therefore, let's maybe say this is plus 500. All right, so it's a difference per month of $500 in order to uh, have the larger structure and have the office building. The other thing you don't know, take into account is like miscellaneous, and that is the fact that with an office comes like computers and phones and, and tables and chairs, and now you need a break room, now you need a coffee maker, now you need an espresso maker, now you need to have toilet paper, now you need to have all these other random stuff in the office that's gonna cost you way, way more. And so just a computer might cost you a thousand, two thousand dollars, the table, hundred, two hundred dollars, a chair, hundred dollars, like, like it just keeps adding up. So if we look over the course of a year, you will easily spend a thousand dollars per month in just office amenities. The random stuff, like a refrigerator, oh, now I need a microwave, now I need coffee, coffee cups, now I need this, like all the random that you're gonna spend every month because now you have a building, let alone the insurance, like let's just throw that into here too, the ins extra insurance of insuring the building and all, all your stuff that's now in it. So when we really look at it, the cost of having an actual office, one office person working all day long is gonna be that 4,800, now we're at 5,800 plus 2,000, that's 7,800 plus this over here, we're looking at $8,300 per month to have one office person working full time. 
So even in a big business, I believe it's still better to have an answering service. Now, the last thing I wanted to share is if you're looking for an answering service, what are the three things that you want to ask them or know about? Number one, you want to make sure that they integrate with your CRM, your customer relationship management tool. So whether you're using Job or Service Autopilot or Lawn Pro or uh, Yardbook or whatever software you're using, make sure that it integrates with your software because you don't want them just taking notes for you. Like you don't want them just to be a fancy, a fancy answering service. You want it to be where they can actually get into your software, schedule appointments for you. They can set up estimates for you. They can do your invoicing, take payment over the phone. Like you want them to actually be in your software, not literally just be answering the phone call, making notes on a piece of paper and sending you a picture. Like that, that's just a, a fancy answering service, a fancy answering machine at the end of the day. Number two is you want to make sure that they can do more than just answering the phone and taking a message. Like, okay, all right, great, okay, bye. Like you don't just want that. You want them to actually go in and change things in your software. And you want them to go in and be able to do things like email. You gotta open up your email to them. You gotta billing, invoicing, payroll. If you can, get to where they can do onboarding so that when you hire someone, you're not having to send them forms and ask them to sign this paper. Can you send your bank information? And oh, can you get that tax, that you know, W-4 over to me and I gotta fill that out. And, let the office person do that. Let the, the virtual staff send that information, ideally through like DocuSign, it can be virtually done. This is how we do it at Command Center. The franchisees fill out one form when they hire somebody, it takes them like two minutes, and then Command Center goes and creates all the documents and sends that via DocuSign, and on the DocuSign asks for a voided check from the employee so we can do payroll. Like It's all really systematized. It takes us maybe 10 or 15 min minutes to onboard someone instead of the owner taking an hour out of their evening when they're working on a document, they're in bed with their spouse, but they're working on their laptop. Like that's what you don't want. And so, number three is there will be minor mistakes. The third thing you got to keep in mind when you're hiring an office staff that's virtual is you're going to have minor mistakes because again, we're trying to get around this whole turnover issue, which means you're going to have multiple people handling your account if you're doing a virtual office staff. Okay, and you want that, by the way. If someone's like, "Oh no, I'm going to have a dedicated person," that's again bad. What if happens if they leave? What if they're unhappy with that call services as as an employer and they leave, and, or they get a kid, or they move to the other side of the country, or whatever? You're going to have that same turnover issue. That is, you're going to always have new people that you, you have to keep training them up on how you do things. You want a system that you buy into that's a virtual training staff that can answer your calls and all the rest of it, regardless of who answers the phone, they know how to do it. Now, when you do that and you have that, you know, that many people touching your account and you have people that are not physically with you answering calls, making customer service judgment, uh, when you have that, you're going to have mistakes. And so, like I've said before, if someone can do 90% efficiency compared to me, I want to delegate it if I'm trying to grow my business. And so you've got to realize there's going to be minor mistakes, things like wrong phone numbers entered in as they're typing and they knock a wrong key, the wrong email address, the address is like 5565 instead of, five, and then instead they do 5556. Like, they're going to be, it's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot. Um, and it's because they're virtual and they don't know your area. They don't know specifically that on the left side of George Street is a good neighborhood, on the right side is a bad neighborhood. Like, they don't know all those little intricate details. And so you've got to realize there's going to be some mistakes, but it is a massive, massive win to reduce all of these issues by having virtual staff in comparison to your own office, building, structure as the business grows. And if you're small, it's a whole lot better than answering the phone with a mower in the background or jumping back on a truck and being reactive every time a phone call. Like, Oh, the buzz in my, my pocket. I'll go, I remember this. Buzz in your pocket while you're mowing. Oh, stop the mower. Turn it off. Okay, boom. Grab it. Walking to the truck, grabbing out your laptop, trying to answer back. Like, that's no run, good way to run a business. Take those things off your plate, that admin work, that more reactive type work, and focus on selling jobs, hiring more people, and building your business. This is my opinion. I think everyone should be focused on hiring a virtual staff that doesn't require a big office, and buying more land, and hiring people ever so often, and putting all the cards, all your eggs in one basket of one person's mind, and hoping they don't leave. I'm Mike Andes, let's get businesscourse.com. Check it out, and make sure you click the like button.